Hi everybody. Today on the Kunkel Homestead, we're going to be talking about help. We had unexpected baby bunnies. Hi everyone. This is Aaron and Amanda with the Kunkel Homestead and Today we're going to be talking about a topic we have been wanting to do a video on for a while. We've had a lot of requests for this sort of a video and we are going to be discussing what to do if you unexpectedly have a litter of rabbits in your care. So first things first, we are not veterinarians. Uh, we are not medically trained so nothing in this video is to be construed as medical advice. This is just stuff that we've picked up over the last few years of doing this, things that have worked for us and things that we've researched. Um, so you know if you do have any medical concerns do seek a professional. All right well we're gonna go off our handy dandy notes so if you need notes take them because we're gonna be going over some things here. Yeah, we have um, a, a four point topic here. So point number one. Point number one, don't panic. Uh, a lot of people ask or they assume that if they touch the babies, mom's going to reject them or kill them and that's going to be the end of that. Um, that's not the case. Mom does not care. If she trusts you, she's going to let you touch the babies. And we highly recommend that you do. You're going to need to do a full inspection of each kit um, to make sure that you've got all the limbs, to make sure that they don't have an umbilical cord still attached that needs to be trimmed off. So um, definitely pick them up, hold them, handle them, um, they'll be okay. Um, another point would be mom will know what to do. She has really, really good instincts. So they follow those, they just kick in and all of a sudden she's like, I have babies, I should do this thing now. So. Right. And as far as the mom goes, she's not going to be in the nest. Aside from when she is having the babies, she's not going to be in the nest. And, and again, don't panic about that. That is normal. Um, out in the wild, if a rabbit has babies, they have them, they cover them up, and they leave. The mother does not stay around because where she is is where a predator's eye is going to be. And she does not want that eye to be anywhere near her nest. Um, a mother rabbit will feed twice a day. That's it. So they do not feed immediately after birth like a puppy or a kitten would, like you're probably expecting. Um, so do keep that in mind. And again, don't panic if you don't see the mom immediately feeding them. It could take several hours up to a day for them to get their first feeding. So our, our first few sub points here, you notice that we're, we're talking more about mom than the babies. And, and there's actually a really good reason for that. Um, our point number two after don't panic is take care of mom. Well, you know, um, mom's going to take care of the baby, so you got to take care of mom. Right. Um, we like to supplement mom's feed as soon as we see her have babies by giving her um, leafy greens, spinach. Spinach is great in small quantities. It's very acidic, so it adds extra calories, uh, extra iron, extra calcium, which they're going to need after giving birth. That really helps them bounce back and recover. Um, bananas that has potassium, just a little chunk of banana just to get them that extra potassium bounce back from uh, loss of blood. Um, and we also give them alfalfa which is a higher calorie and a higher calcium as well. Um, and then of course a higher protein pellet. So 16-17% protein in a pellet will definitely help your mother rabbit bounce back and keep weight on herself while she's feeding those kits because their milk is so calorie dense because they only feed twice a day and those babies have to grow quickly. So if you take care of mom, mom will take care of the babies. Yeah, so so just, you know, and, and most of these things, you know, your grocery store, your feed store, your pet store, they're going to be able to supply these. So the, the special foods aren't that difficult to get a hold of. Even if it is in the middle of the night, you can still run by, you know, your Walmart or something and you can get at, least, bag of spinach. at least some of these things to, to get you through until you can get what you, you know, really need to have. Um, of course, in addition to food, you know, fresh water. Mom's making milk. She's going to need lots of hydration, but I mean, you are giving her water anyway, right? We don't, we don't need to say that. Okay, just, just checking. Um, and the, the last point as far as taking care of mom is going to be making sure that she's not having any difficulties with the birthing process itself. 
and the after effects during and after make sure that there's not you know any excessive bleeding anything like that um, that could be signs of a uh, you know miscarriage or of an infection things like that or a but, stuck baby or yeah but uh, again you know talk to a vet that that's that's not our area of expertise but that is something we have learned to watch out for so after that so we've had don't panic and take care of mom the next thing to do this one is for the kits is we have to keep them warm you we we've lost more kits to to temperatures than to anything and it's it's awful it breaks our heart every time it happens but it even happens to indoor litters so if if your rabbits are outside if you have the ability consider bringing them inside if it's a cooler time of year uh, we have a whole video on how to make an emergency cage um, just kind of wire wrapped around a kiddie pool basically it's not a full-time housing situation but we've got two set up right behind us right now in the living room um, it's maternity ward it's february and we can't have these babies outside so make sure that they they are going to stay warm enough definitely um so after you've brought them in um, you want to make sure that you've you know mom has she made a mess has she made a nest for these little babies um do you have a nest box or something that will work for a nest box? I mean, literally a cardboard box, a shoe box, a, a shoe tote of some sort that she can easily hop in and out of um, will work wonders to be able to put the babies in there, keep them contained in a nest. Um, did she pull fur? Moms will pull fur from their uh, dewlop and from their, their chest and belly area uh, for a few reasons. Uh, they have that dewlop to give them extra skin surface to be able to pull fur. Um, and then they also perf, uh, pull from their abdomen to expose uh, their nipples so their babies can feed easier. Um, they actually release a hormone that actually loosens the hair follicle. So it's not like us pulling on our hair to make a nest. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna be very painful. It's actually, it's pretty much falling out at that point. It's like a really good shed for them. Yeah, the rabbit's not injuring itself if you see her pulling fur. No, she, she's not hurting herself. Um, the next point would be how many kits would be enough kits to keep each other warm? If there's one kit, that's not going to be enough body heat. They have to stay together. Even if mom builds this elaborate nest, it's not going to be enough warmth to sustain those babies. Um, we've lost them where there's two. We've lost them where there's four, where an instance got pulled, two got pulled out of the nest while feeding. So uh, safety in numbers, friends. Um, if you don't have um, enough kits to keep each other warm, uh, we just had an instance just the other day. Yeah, uh, our one of our rabbits, uh, Judy, which is Buttercup's daughter, she had a litter, but she had one rabbit at 4.45 in the afternoon, and she didn't have any other babies until 11 o'clock the next morning. That's an insane amount of time. I, I have babies. never seen 12, 15 hours in between babies being born before. I have never seen that before. Yeah, they're usually, usually bam, 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 done. 30 minutes and they're all out. <laughs> they're quick. Um, so what we had to do is for that one baby is even indoors in the, in the cooler time of, of winter here, and we don't keep our house at you know, 80 degrees, it's still not warm enough for one kit to survive. So what we actually did is we took a nest box, and we had an actual wooden one, not the cardboard, but the oh, illustration still serves. We took our nest box, and we took a heating pad and we actually set the nest box on top of the heating pad and you'll have to figure out what heat settings work best every heating pad is going to be different but that heat was enough it radiated into the box and we had the baby in there with a blanket over it and it kept that kit warm overnight until we had siblings until the next day when siblings appeared and it was able to get put back in with the siblings and they all kept each other warm since then and that baby being by itself was perfectly fine again they only feed twice a day so being away from mom for 12 hours it was fine yeah but it kept warm and we would have lost that baby if we had not done this yeah, temperatures guaranteed are, are deathly for babies either it's hot too hot or too cold it can kill them yeah so so as as far as the you know the nesting materials um you can use hay is really the best thing straw really um or hay if that's what you have that's what you have um, you know, if mom's pulled fur, that's great. If she hasn't, or if she hasn't pulled enough, you can supplement that with hamster bedding, like that fluffy kind of papery, cottony sort of thing. Um, don't use like pillow batting, 
Don't use wood chips. Don't use blankets. Don't use blankets because the baby will get kind of wrapped up in it and won't be able to get out, won't be able to feed, that sort of a thing. Um, so just something that's going to be loose that the mom can dig around and move easily. But we, we don't like to use the wood chips because of the splinters and the smells and things like that. It, it, it doesn't work great. Um, but yeah, supplement that nest as needed and you know that just keep those babies warm. So the, the last point that we have after keeping the babies warm is actually making sure that they do get fed. So in that litter that we were just talking about of Judy's where she had one baby and then 12 plus hours later she had the rest of her babies. Seven more. She had eight total. That first baby was hungry by the time the rest of them were born. And I did supplement feed that first kit just to make sure that it wasn't gonna fall behind. Because if it does miss a feeding, it will get hungry, it will get weaker, and it may not be able to fend for itself to get food when the food is made available. Um, by the way, when, uh, when a mom does nurse, she actually will kind of stand on top of the babies and they'll roll over and suckle. Um, so again, don't be startled you know, if you don't see the mom laying over. That's why you can get away with such a small nest box. She stands on top of them while they eat. Yeah, unlike a dog, or, like a cat. dog or a cat. She doesn't lay on her side. That's a very vulnerable position for a bunny to be in. So when they're on their uh, side, that's a relaxed, unaware rabbit. Um, so it's a natural defense for them to be in an upright position so the babies roll over to reach mommy's tummy. Right, right. So if there's a predator, mom just gone. So. Exactly. But, but we do have a whole video on tummy checks yes. and making sure babies are fed and what to do in case babies are not keeping up with the rest of the litter if you've got a large litter. Right. Uh, anything over eight is too many babies to be fed by one mama. Yeah, anything over five, six, we start to get nervous and we get real particular about our tummy checks. But again, we're, we're not going to dwell on that on this video. We have a, a whole video with 25,000 some odd views. 26,000 um, 26, views. 26,000. Rock! <laughs> um, so, so we'll link to that one in the, the card or the description. Um, so go, go check that one out. That's got all the information. Um, so yeah, please, please do refer to that one for, for that topic. But... I think that wraps us up. Gosh, I hope so. So that that's you know just the, the four points. Don't panic, please. Don't panic. Um, take take, care, care, of take care of the mom so she can take care of the babies. Make sure the babies are warm, and after that first day or so passes, do make sure that those babies are getting fed, and you should do just fine. But as always, you know, do leave us a you know a comment if you have any questions. Send us a message. We're we're happy to help as as much as we possibly can. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.